About a month ago, we uploaded a video on one of the most controversial races in NCAA history. On January 15th of 2022, we saw Terrence Jones from Texas Tech tie the indoor 60-meter dash record with a very quick time of 6.45 seconds. This was the fastest time ever recorded by a collegiate athlete, only tied by Christian Coleman, who has since gone on to become the greatest 60-meter runner of all time. However, upon further review of this race, the start of this event represented a huge problem. Against all of the other athletes in this field, Terrence Jones very likely false started for this 60 meter dash. It's just as simple as that. You see, in track and field, any reaction time under 0.1 seconds is actually deemed a false start, and this rule stretches from the international scene right down to the NCAA. And for this specific race, from multiple angles, you can see Jones reacting significantly faster than any other athlete, which obviously represents a huge problem since this race was not called back and Jones ran through the tape clocking this new collegiate record. Now, since this performance went down, Jones has gone on to run some very impressive 100 meter performances, and he even ran a new personal record of 10.09 on April 16th of last year. But there was really nothing that he did otherwise that would give him the ability to run a 6.45. Now, we made a full 10-minute video on this one race, because at the heart of it, most of the blame could actually be placed on the starter here, as the NCAA rules place responsibility on the race starter if no electronic blocks are present in the competition and if a potential false start did go down. So if you're interested in this video, I'll make sure to leave a link up in the right-hand corner right now. This video had a lot of feedback, and at the time, most of it was pretty much in agreement that yeah, Jones probably false started, and it probably helped him run even faster on the day than he otherwise would have. But something shocking just went down with Terrence Jones, and it honestly left me completely speechless. In the 2023 Big 12 Indoor Championships, Jones was back in the 60 meter dash. Now, it's important to note that he hasn't run a single 60 meter dash since his 6.45 collegiate record. And even though he did attempt to run in last year's NCAA championships in this event, he was actually disqualified because of an early false start. So this race is actually a very significant moment as it could either break or prove this man's credibility in this event. So now after more than an entire year of waiting, on February 24th, Terrence Jones finally competed in the 60 meter dash and he managed to do this. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Terrence Jones actually ran a 6.46 for the 60 meter dash in the semifinals, which is just one one hundredth of a second slower than his own collegiate record. And as you might have noticed, his start here was absolutely terrible, pretty much the polar opposite of what he did exactly one year in the past. This is just crazy, it really is, and it makes me wonder exactly what was going on in last year's NCAA record setting event. Was it actually a false start, or did everyone else just have a terrible reaction, or did he actually respond normally and the camera angles were just weird? What was actually going on? In realistic terms, I think what's going on here is that Jones is just in that good of shape right now. He's still only 20 years old, and he'll be turning 21 later this year in November, so I'd imagine that he's improved pretty significantly since last year when he ran 6.45. That being said, can we just take a moment to appreciate just how impressive this performance actually is. I don't think I've ever seen such a fast time in a 60 meter dash after such a terrible start. This really is on the lower end of bad starts for anyone in any sprinting event. In fact, it reminds me of Johan Blake's super slow start back in 2011 when he ran his number two all-time performance in the 200 meters, clocking a time of 19.26 against all odds, especially from his slower start. I actually did some further digging into this race to see if I could find any precise timing on his reaction time, because it really did look like it was over two tenths of a second. It would not surprise me at all. But unfortunately, there was no such numbers neither on pttiming.com, where the actual event results can be located, nor was there anything available during the actual live stream. So sadly, we're only left here to speculate as to what his reaction time actually was. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and take a guess as to what exactly happened. I really do think that his reaction time here was around two tenths of a second. That seems like a pretty good estimate. It wasn't quite as slow as what we saw from Johan Blake in 2011, at least I don't think it was that slow, but it was obviously still slow. I mean, you could see it with the naked eye that he went out a little bit slower than everyone else in the field. 
actually, before we get into any further analytical breakdowns here, I want to do something that I failed to do last time. I want to show the actual race with the volume on, so you can dictate for yourself what his reaction time might have been. First we'll go with Jones, and then we'll actually compare that with Johan Blake. So yeah, there you have it. Both pretty slow starts, but also both historically fast performances. I think that he had a reaction time close to 0.2 seconds, which is totally realistic I think, and more often than not, a normal reaction time will fluctuate anywhere between 0.12 and 0.16, give or take a few tenths. So to be conservative on this estimate, let's just say that if he had a normal start of 0.15 seconds, he would have just ran a 6.41 which would have tied him with both Christian Coleman and Lamont Marcel Jacobs in last year's Indoor World Championships, and it would also place him just ahead of the world lead of 6.42, which was set by Trayvon Bromel just a few weeks ago. Against all odds, Jones just proved me wrong with a statement performance, and I think in many ways, I owe this man an apology. It still really does look as though he falls started during last year's 6.45, however this 6.46 is impossible to deny as a world class performance, and if he can simply put together this kind of performance with a normal start, we could be in for something extremely special. Also, can we just talk about his acceleration from 10 meters up to the finish? I genuinely have never seen someone sprint like this ever in the past. He just looks so smooth and so effortlessly powerful. And against his fellow Big 12 competitors, this opening round was a cakewalk because he won this opening round by more than a tenth of a second, a huge margin in the open 60. Also, just a few hours ago, Jones ran the 60 meter finals in this year's Big 12 finals. And again, he ran a super impressive performance, winning this 60 meter dash again, this time in 6.48 seconds, showcasing that this 6.46 was certainly not a fluke. And also this time he put his hands out in celebration over the final 10 or perhaps final 15 meters, a move that certainly lost him a bit of time at the end. Terrence Jones is currently looking very dangerous in the 60 meter dash. With solid top end speed and also incredible early acceleration, he's throwing down some numbers that we haven't seen in years. However, given his clearly taller stature than your average sprinter, I feel like he might be unstoppable this season in the 100 or perhaps even in the 200 meters. Now an athlete that is an obvious comparison here is Usain Bolt which let's be real, he is the greatest sprinter of all time, case closed. When it comes to taller athletes, it's nearly impossible for them to compete with shorter athletes in the shorter sprints. However, Terrence Jones, much like Usain Bolt, has this special ability, so if he can put together this impressive start with his impressive top end speed, I don't know, I'm thinking incredible times just might happen this outdoor season. This is a big deal for Terrence Jones, and honestly, the way he looked in this championship event, it would not surprise me at all if he got close to 6.40 this season, which is a time barrier that only three athletes in history have ever achieved. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.